to Creative AI Conversations with me, Leah Coleman. In this interview series, we'll be chatting with prominent machine learning researchers and artists on their perspectives on Creative AI. Can you introduce yourself? Um, sure. <laughs> My name is uh, Devi Parikh, um, and I'm a, I'm a research scientist at Facebook AI Research, and I'm also a faculty at Georgia Tech. Awesome. Could you tell me a little bit about your research interests? And in the last seven, 10 years, I've been working at the intersection of uh, computer vision and natural language processing. As I'm personally most excited about finding ways in which AI can enhance or augment um, human creativity. Um, I also dabble a little bit in algorithmic art, um, where I, I try and write code that will produce uh, what I think are visually interesting, yeah. uh, visually interesting things. And... What are you doing in your research now? Yeah, so some of the models um, that we've experimented in the context of uh, AI and creativity are, uh, are GANs, uh, mm -hmm. Generative Adversarial Networks. Right. Um, and we were looking at that in the context of uh, generating sketches. The first challenge that we ran into was that there weren't data sets out there that had these fantastical depictions of creatures that like Google's Quick Draw data set, for instance, has many sketches in it, um, but they're all very realistic depictions. Um, and so the first challenge that we ran into is we don't have this data. And so we, right. we, collected, that, we collected that data set. Ah, uh, okay. In that, what was your technical setup like? We had, we had two data sets. They both had 10,000 sketches each. Um, and we were training the GAN models on a per part basis. So we were, we were training one model just to generate the head. We were training mm -hmm. one model just to generate the wings and things of that sort. Um, and we were using style GAN2 um, okay. yep. as the basis of our model. Yeah. yeah, and there our focus was to have this part-based generative model. Um, so in the work, up until that point, we had focused just on training an AI system that can generate the sketch one part at a time. Mm -hmm. But our motivation, one of our motivations behind doing it in, a, in this one part at a time fashion was so that we can set it up where a human can now also come in and draw with it. And so the mm -hmm. model can draw one part and then the human can draw another yeah. part. And then the model would have to draw the next part in a way that responds to what I drew, right? Because it yeah. still wants to make sure that things are stitching together, that overall it still looks like a bird. Mm -hmm. um, and so that's something that we're exploring more now where uh, we are looking at what does this human AI collaboration look like if, if people are drawing in conjunction with, the, with this AI system, um, do they end up drawing better sketches? Do they like the process better? Do they feel more creative at the end of it? And so that's something that we are actively looking at right now this summer. And so that brings us to the question of, do you think of AI as a tool for people to use or a whole nother intelligence entirely? So I think that is what at least I am personally most excited about. I think mm -hmm. I am most excited about seeing how we can use AI so that people feel better at the end of it, right? Where a person using this tool is more excited about the outcome or enjoyed the process more or got new ideas that they wouldn't have gotten otherwise if they weren't working with the system. And so I think of it, yes, I'm personally most excited about finding ways in which AI can enhance or augment um, human creativity. Um, mm -hmm. It doesn't necessarily have to be in the sense that whatever it is, the artifact that is produced at the end of it, is judged as being better by some external third entity. Um, I think it doesn't necessarily have to be that. I think my, at least my primary interest is in the person who was using the tool. Mm -hmm. Are they more excited? Are they more satisfied? Yeah. Are they happier? Do they, mm -hmm. yeah, would they want to come back and do this more? Yeah, uh, I like that. And related to that, has that, do you have an example of when something like that happened, like a personal anecdote about creativity and technology? My spouse, my husband, Dhruv Batra, who's, who does many of the things that I do, also faculty at Georgia Tech, also a research scientist at FAIR and so on. He's an AI researcher as well. And he, I think, doesn't think of himself as like a creative person in the context of being like art-oriented or anything like that. Like he has these stories from when he was in school and drawing classes and how terrible his drawings used to be. And like he has a whole bunch of those stories. And it was funny that I once coded up this tool. It's a very simple tool. It's It's in JavaScript where... I just uh, coded up these symmetries where anything that you draw, mm -hmm. any stroke that you draw gets replicated around a bunch of axes. 
Um, and so like a simple stroke basically becomes like a flower, right? Because it gets replicated along different, different symmetries. Mm -hmm. And he tried that out and he was just, his mind was blown. He's like, oh, wow, there's just no way of going wrong in this way. <laughs> anything I draw just looks fascinating. I had never seen him get excited about yeah. anything that's related to like um, any, any, any sort of creative exercise. And, um, and this made me realize that, yeah, if you just sort of have the right tools where people feel engaged and they're uh, fascinated by so, and you have to produce this, right? The symmetry is coded in, but the stroke is your stroke. So it's not like the tool on its own can do anything. You have right. to be engaging with it. And is that what you would say is the driving force behind your work? I mean, I think in in some ways, I think that is it is that is what I am after. I feel like if so, I also do other things like non technology related art. Like I do some macrame. Um, where you're sort of weaving all these things yeah. out of cords and ropes and I do some origami and there's a certain um, feeling that you get when you are creating something that you're you're in this flow state you're really you're yeah. enjoying what you're doing your mind is off other things I think there's a certain joy that you get out of it and there's a certain it like uses your brain in a different way that I think is very valuable mm -hmm. and I feel like if I can contribute to creating one more way in which people can experience that um I feel like that would be that would be success I think that would be awesome yeah I think so too and now let's switch gears a little bit I want to ask you what do you think is the biggest challenge in your field at the moment yeah so one one that comes to mind in the context of uh, AI and creativity in particular um is uh, evaluation in the, in the machine learning and AI space, we are so used to having benchmarks on which we can just sort of compute accuracies or different metrics, and that's how we measure progress. Um, but when you think about creativity, it's it's hard to think about what those benchmarks could look like. Like, what does that even mean? And it's partly because it is just so human-centric, where I feel like the right evaluation has to be just going to people eventually. But the downside is that it is hard to make this consistent across different labs, across different research organizations. Ah, and do you have any ideas on that? In other words, what might better evaluation of creative AI look like? One could be where if you have like a centralized um, evaluation setup where there is maybe some, let's say I sign up to say that I'm going to run this challenge for um, creative expression in the context of sketching and everybody gets to submit their machine learning models, um, let's say once every year, at some pre-allotted time, and some one entity just on, let's say, a yearly basis runs a consistent set of evaluation with all the models that were submitted. And so mm -hmm. we know that nothing else changed and everything was evaluated the same way. Yeah. Um, so, that, so that could be maybe one way of getting some uh, standardization. Mm -hmm. Love that because then you get standardization across evaluation, which is like one of the hardest parts of working in creative AI. Well, I want to thank you for chatting with me today, Debbie. Um, I feel like I learned a lot, and it was so great to hear your perspective on things. Yeah, it was great to talk to you.